Okay, so he's saying that the deer would look like the Hottentot. So there's a physical resemblance there. Genetically, they haven't probably gone into the point of looking into that. But other partly Bushmen and partly Negroid people are also known to be found in the Sahara. Kuhn maintains, and that's at a modern day, uh, in the ancient times, when they look, go back in the Arctic for Cape Rector, you get sucks over to the left hand in the Bantu expansion. Kuhn maintains that the Horatian also include ancient South African Khoisan populations and elements. And I'd like to make a mention that the Khoisan are actually two people, really the Khoi and the San, who had gotten together and melded. And so that informed that. Up until M. Galago Loriente's Motoman article in the Haber article, researchers claimed that Africans had no relationship to the Neanderthals. Well, they really didn't. It looks like they got all their admix from someone else who had admix themselves. And that's where they got it from. So it's more like that. I'd work. But Proofer and others found that the Khoisan share more alleles with Altaic Neanderthal than Denisovans. Well, that's nothing special. They didn't have much Denisovan genetics in them anyhow so very slight if any in that regard Denisovan something kind of new here's an old depiction of Neanderthals and that's quite different from the one that we started the article with which is quite different from the current form that we see today of them looking at it god this thing's got to quit resetting let's see if it'll pop right down to where it's supposed to hey so you have this form here that they used to have, and it looked very ugh. And we knew that Cro-Magnon was a lot more like modern man. Now we found out Cro-Magnon is actually modern man. And Neanderthals look kind of like Chuck Norris, and there's not much different. In fact, you wouldn't really see them as radically different like you would in this photograph that's here, but that's just one thing. Haber noticed that derived DNA in all non-Africans is more closely related to Neanderthals from the Caucasus area, or Alraic Neanderthals. Isn't that funny how that Caucasus keeps coming up over and over again? Most people don't think of it, but in the last ice age, everything was shoved down more to the middle. In fact, Mediterranean is called Middle Earth. Mediterranean. Terrain. Mediterranean. In the supplemental section of Proofer's work, there is considerable discussion of the relationship between Neanderthal and the Khoisan. In relation to the Altaic Neanderthal, non-Africans have a lower divergence rate than Africans, between 10 and 20 percent. Proofer said in 2013, note little statistics between non-African and African divergence. Don't know what he's trying to get by saying that, but... An interesting finding made by Proofer was that Altaic, Neanderthal, and Denisovans are estimated to have similar split times in the Wayback Machine. Like roughly at that time, these people seem to have formed and those type of people seem to have formed. Not the people we have today, but archaic forms of it, right? However, the divergence estimates for African Khoisan, Mandakan, and Altaic is younger than the split between Africans and Denisovan ar archaic individuals and modern African individuals. Uh, when, he's, when they're saying African in a lot of these articles, it confuses some people, and they would have to say, well, they must be talking about black people. And no, they're not. For all of North Africa and Africans were Caucasians, and this is one of the reasons that they say that Africa has the most diverse populations there because not only is it just white people or just Chinese people like most countries are, but there are white people and black people. But then just black people, there's those Bantu Congoids, and they're not related to the Nihilotics, and they're not really related closely to the people that are in even the Horn today, which have a lot of admix to them. And then you have the people of the Khoisan, that are like from the, uh, the Gods Must Be Crazy movies and other primitives that are still living there in the heart of Africa, including a pygmy population, which of course puts a joker in the deck right there. And you're like, look at this, you know, variation. 
And that's what they're referring to whenever they say things like that. The split times between the Khoisan and the Mandakan may be explained by the presence of AF24 haplotype in West Africa. I don't know what he's trying to get at. It seems like he's trying to make a connection that's probably not connective because these other people that are African Khoisans predate the Negro phenotype by thousands and thousands and thousands of years. The oldest Negroid phenotype, as I said before, is Asselar uh, Man at 4400 BC. They find ones right before that, but they're still a proto form, so it happened at 4400 BC. So this can't come into effect that much either, can it? No, but I think they're still under the belief that they started everything, and so they're trying to say something came out of them that did all of this. Khoisan engaged in eating roasted grasshoppers. That would be a more modern depiction of them. Proofer detected a relationship between Neanderthals and the Mandakan. This is not surprising now that we know the Mandakan have 2% Eurasian ancestry, according to Pickerel. So there's a lot all the way through that. Just about every single one of them has ancient archaic admix. And then they got some more during the Barbary slave trade and things where people were trying to admix them to the point that they were more usable. But that's Islamic slave trade. Although they try to blame everything that happened on them, on the people that actually freed them and you're giving them a chance. It's kind of pitiful, but let's just continue. In summary, uh, diverse African populations carry Eurasian ancestry. As a result, researchers will probably find more Africans that carry Neanderthal ancestry in the future. I agree with that, Clyde. Um, if, as they test them all, you'll probably find it just about encompasses them all. And it shows you the range of Cro-Magnon man that he went down through. For if you look at places like the Hofmeyer site that's down in the Cape, it shows a Caucasoid at 40,000 BC. Now, Cro-Magnon formed in North Africa, or actually in France and things, but he's dribbled all the way down, and you can tell by the way they ring through that, that looking, it looks like they had boat travel even at that time before. Yeah, there's a lot of things coming out about things like that, and how old things do, and when happened what. And some things have changed just recently with Gobekli Tepe and stuff. Uh, back doubling the age of when people were able to do Neolithic stonework. But more amazing than that, no one takes into account that Cro-Magnon is non-prognastic, and they say prognathism runs away from people after they find farming. And it takes a period of time. But we find that that would say that easily 40,000 years ago people were doing the things that led to lack of prognathism. And if you have a chin, a prominent chin, not something that tucks under like this, but a prominent chin, you've had interaction with Cro-Magnon Man. He was the first one to show it with it, and there are geneticists and people who have said, well, that's where that comes from. Kind of like a blatant, blanche statement, that's where that comes from. So they've said that they didn't have any mix or this, that, and the other, but they do. They have the mix of an archaic that we still haven't identified yet. Geneticists call this a ghost species because we don't have the genetics that match it in any way. And it's not found in any other people on the planet, too. You know, just like we thought that it was around Neanderthals was different, well... Everybody on the planet except for them had Neanderthal aggression. Well, we see that they did too now, but that, of course, is also because of Cro-Magnon or Homo sapiens type aggression, and the Homo sapiens go back 315,000 years, and now we're looking at a modern type human at a date that is 30 times the date of even a proto-Negroid type. Yeah. So that's just one part of it, though, and it's just a small indigression of them at roughly leaving somebody behind 2 3% maybe. 
but there was an integration. Denisovans, too, and you'd be surprised how far they've found that that reaches. For back before we were we, people created something that, wow, like popcorn coming out of that and some certain integration formed Cro-Magnon Man. Cro-Magnon Man is now known as early European hunter-gatherers because their haplogroup still exists today. You definitely would recognize that person. That's the very first modern human. Like, share, and subscribe, guys, and enjoy. And I'm sorry it cut into two parts. There was no reason for it. I think it was only about 25 minutes. I'm going to blame the cat. Peace.